What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. Well, one of the criticisms that has been uh, aimed at Vice President Harris is that she's been ducking interviews. The first month of her campaign since she replaced Joe Biden as the standard bearer for the Democratic Party. One of the criticisms was that she, for the first month, she wasn't doing any interviews. Now, she's doing them, but for the most part, they've been in controlled environments or in environments where you could see that the participants, the moderators, or as far as in the debate or uh, interviewers, they've been softballing it for or rigging it for. 60 Minutes would not have any of that. At least the interviewer. In the interview with Kamala Harris wasn't going for it. Now, 60 minutes after with the editing process, they were looking out for her still. I'll get, I'll get in that, into that in a moment. But this is the first person I've, I've seen. And I have to tell you, I'm not familiar who this guy is. I don't watch 60 minutes anymore. I used to when I was a kid. I used to when I was a kid when we didn't have as many choices as far as television is concerned. But when I was growing up, I used to watch watch uh, 60 Minutes when it was Mike Wallace and uh, Andy Rooney, uh, Ed Bradley. What was his name? Uh, Morley Schaefer, I think his name was. Oh, man. Uh, who else was on that show? Leslie Stahl. I think back in the early 90s, she was like, even still a little bit fuckable. Barbara Walters, I think, was a contributor. I used to watch back in those days. I even think Harry Reasoner was on there before he passed away in the 80s. But anyway, I haven't watched in a long time. But I looked at this interview. The first thing I noticed when it comes to Kamala Harris, is she has this horrible interview style. Like, I'm going to tell you something. The two best politicians I've ever seen as far as mastering the art of saying nothing when answering a question have been Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. They are the masters at word salad. A bunch of gobbledygook. Saying nothing. But... For some reason, when Cory Booker does it, he makes it sound like he's saying something. Uh, he's saying something that is substantive, but he's really not. If you really listen to what he's saying, Kamala, when you listen to her, you start looking at your watch or you know, you look at your phone or you drift um, because a lot of it is nonsense. It, it, and then she doesn't really answer the question. She always directs questions to what she wants to talk about. She even in the interview said something about what well, all due respect. I, I think the better question would be. She didn't ask him what the fuck he said. I think you should be asking me this because I don't want to answer what you're asking me. When he was asking her about Israel and their aggressive tactics toward Iran, which, by the way, I'm not trying to make Iran out to be some victim. But my goodness, if Iran retaliates against an Israel attack, somehow it, it, that gets removed from the equation and Iran is somehow this rogue uh, you know aggressive nation when in, in reality Israel is, is just as culpable then he talked about how look Israel is doing pretty much whatever they want to do even though you've asked them to try to tamp down 
this growing escalation escalation between it, you know themselves and Iran. I think did they just kill another Iranian leader? Well, I'll take that back. I take that back. I can't say that. But didn't another Iranian leader conveniently get killed in another helicopter crash? Anyway, when asked about Netanyahu's uh, Netanyahu's intransigence when it comes to their foreign policy, his aggressive foreign policy, she gave a non-answer. She gave a non-answer. Now, part of this could be, too, she's not president. So she has to stand in line with the Biden administration's policies. But the difficulty in doing that is that you're running for president. So a vice president running for president has to play this game of staying loyal, or at least appearing to stay loyal to the administration while still trying to uh, still trying to make a name for yourself or to uh, differentiate yourself as far as you are, uh, you are worthy of this office, which I think a lot of us think she's really not because I don't want to go way too off topic here, but she's a DEI hire. She is. I don't like that term. I don't like it, but she is that. She shouldn't have been vice president. You know what I'm saying? She was there to fill a quota. She was basically picked because the Democratic Party felt like they owed black women who had been their most uh, loyal constituency. They picked, because of symbolism, someone that is perceived to be a black woman. But for much of the administration, she was just on the shelf somewhere after she failed as the borders are. And by the way, as he pointed out, the interviewer, since Biden became president until this year, illegal immigration went up by four, uh, quadrupled each year from the Trump administration, 2021, 2022, 2023. It quadrupled until this year. Now, I could go into detail about that. We know why that happened. And we see the effects of why of, of that. But, you know, she didn't want to talk about that. She told me that was an ongoing problem. Yes, illegal immigration has been a big problem since the 90s. But it went up exponentially during the Biden administration because they want them in here. We all know the play. We know why. It has to do a lot with representation in elections. If you look at the elector, if you look at the representation, we look at the electoral college, and many of the leading the leaning democratic states, they've lost representation. California lost a represent a representative. Illinois lost a representative. Uh, Pennsylvania lost a representative. You know, Michigan lost a representative. All these are democratic leaning states. all because of the 2020 census. So if you flood the gates with new arrivees and citizens in these states, their population goes up. Their representation in Congress go up. And also, those states get more electoral votes. Because California went from 55 to 54. Illinois, well, matter of fact, I'll put it to you like this. California peaked at 55, they went down to 54 in 2020. At one point in time, Illinois had 27 electoral votes back in 1960. That's down to 19. Uh, at one time, Pennsylvania back in the 20s had 38 electoral votes. They're down to 19. Illinois, I already said Illinois. Uh, uh, Michigan used to have like 21 or 22 electoral votes. They're down to 15. New Jersey once had like 19 electoral votes. They're down to 15, 14, excuse me. You get the picture? They need to put up, push up representation to stay in power. 
those are considered democratic leaning states. Whereas Republican leaning states, like Texas, for instance, uh, back in 1952, I think it was, they had something around 1952, I think they had something around 20, 20 I want to say 24 electoral votes, right? Now they got 40. Back in 1964, they had 14 electoral votes. Now they got 30. The South as a whole, their electoral representation has gone up. So it has in the case in the West. These are generally Republican-leaning areas, although California, Pacific Northwest, Colorado are exceptions. Arizona is a swing state. But for much of the West, it's, rep it's Republican territory, and their electoral representation has gone up. So it's about math, too. So while Project 225 may have some truth to it, what's going on now, the Democrats, is ongoing and is a real thing. But look, all in all, her performance in this debate was a debacle. Again, so much so that 60 Minutes, as I alluded to earlier, had to edit the whole fucking thing to make her answers sound. Matter of fact, they were taking answers from shit she said earlier and replacing it with word gobbledygook answers, wordy gobbledygook answers that she was given for other things to make her look better. Now, Trump ain't off the hook either. Trump declined to do the 60 Minutes interview. Why? Why? Now, I don't know what the standard answer was. Maybe, oh, they they have to get me. Uh, uh, they're not fair. I'm going to tell you something, man. All this bullshit about Trump being this alpha male, man, get the fuck out of my face with that, man. He is the whiningest fucking dude I've ever seen in my life, man. Whine about everything. Whines about everything. Cry baby. And you know, and I'm gonna tell you something else too. There's definitely truth about him being in cognitive decline. And I'm gonna say this too. And this is for the people who are Trump supporters in my comment section. And this is specifically for the dude to call me an idiot and I quote, a dumb nigga, because he didn't like that I didn't support Trump. You're everything that is wrong with the political process, and you're everything that's wrong with this country. You fucking primate. You banana eating, grapevine swinging, pick and flee off back eating, loin cough, loin cloth wearing, barefoot, jungle loving primate. That's what you are. Sorry. Uh, but anyway. I kept the same energy with Joe Biden. I kept the same energy. I've been saying for years, he's in decline. You can clearly see it. The same thing is true with Donald Trump. Anybody that gets older. Now, when I say cognitive decline, I don't mean he has Alzheimer's, but I do mean that he's mentally slipping. He repeats himself more and more often. When he talks, he, he's stuck in the past. When he would talk back in 2016 about things, he could actually go into detail about stuff. Now it's a lot of um, broadish terminology, or, or it's more, uh, when I say broadish terminology, he'll use one term to talk about umbrella, to, to, to umbrella. Uh, things that should be more nuanced. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's definitely in, in cognitive decline. And I think that the prospect of him sitting down and doing an interview where he sometimes loses train of thought mid-sentence uh, scares the hell out of him and his handlers more than likely. So, you know, he don't want to do an interview with them because he's going to get torn to shreds. He's scared. I'm sorry. To be quite honest, that debate performance he had a month ago was horrible. Now, Kamala wasn't good either, but Trump should have mopped the floor with her. If this was eight years ago, Trump would have mopped the floor with her. And I'm going to tell you another thing, too. 
if Trump does win this election, there's a very good chance that we're going to see a president, J.D. Vance. And I don't mean because I think something's going to happen to Trump. I think the 25th Amendment may actually be invoked because I think Trump is, is seriously in decline. You know, but, you know, I think this is the worst election we've ever had. The the choices we have for president are horrible. It's like choosing between drinking poison and and eating mule and drinking, you know, mule shit or something. Llama shit mixed with spit. I mean, do you, what is it really better? And And by the way. In my, this is just my opinion. Does it really matter who's the president of the United States? They're all part of the same corrupt system. It ain't like one of these guys going to get in here and buck the system. And if you do try to buck the system, you saw they did to John F. Kennedy. And to a lesser extent, what they did to Richard Nixon. If you try to buck the system, if you think that you're more powerful than the system, they're going to remove you, whether through, through gunshot or whether through, you know, a setup. So really, all these guys are all pawns, man. Now, I think that Trump, I'll give him this. I do think that in his core, in his mind, he is probably, and I'm just saying by default, he's a little better in some ways, right? But what blows with me and Trump is, is his supporters. They don't want people like me supporting him. They don't. Look what they did at that, at that rally the other day. Or when that fresh and fit guy tried to get into that little space that he didn't belong in. They let him know. They told him about it, told him on himself. Or when Vivak Ramaswamy was courting uh, voters in Iowa, and they told him to his face, we're not voting for your, your ass because you, you're dark. You're too dark for us. We don't trust you. You know? But I'm supposed to ignore that, though, you know. Yeah. All the racism on the left. Yeah, okay. Oh, <laughs> man, I've been at this Trump rally, bro, and I ain't seen no racism. Do you know what racism is, bro? Yeah, man. That's when they, um, you know, racism is is, is when they they, 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 they tongue you by a tree, man. Ain't nobody put me up no tree. I mean, they call me nigga a couple times, man, but nobody try to me no tree, though, you know. So these good white folks, man, you know, yeah. They, they told me nigga go home, but it was just joking when they said that, man, you know. Like Ryan Garcia, man, just joking. Clown ass. Anyway, this will be done soon. I don't know who's going to win. I honestly don't. And uh, no matter who wins, I think we all lose. That's just me.